Should I say hi to the anti-vaxxers now? Hi lovelies, welcome to my channel, my name is Brian and you're here on a Tuesday. This is where we do deep dives into the environmental, social and ethical issues with the beauty industry. What does GM have to do with the beauty industry? Well, let's dive into it. So the organic and GM debate is actually heavily influencing the beauty industry. As we've talked about before in my videos like this one and I've got another one as well. I've talked about this many times actually. Um, with the rise of green beauty, clean beauty and now blue beauty. <laughs> Most of the messaging around that is that chemicals are bad, even though everything is a chemical. There is rampant greenwashing happening because consumers are led by marketers as opposed to experts and scientists. It's almost like one is better at selling something than the other, like... <laughs> Imagine that. <laughs> Don't think that the organic market is an entirely philanthropic one as well because it is a lucrative market to be part of. People are prepared to pay a premium price for what they consider to be a premium product made with love that cares about them and cares about the safety of them and the environment. Because obviously like scientists that work with food are obviously just trying to kill people. That's exactly why they spent all of their time, money and in some cases sanity in order to get their PhDs. Obviously. If you haven't been here before, what we do here is we put on makeup and we talk about a serious topic because I just feel better when I put on makeup, so there we go. All of the products I use are cruelty free, vegan and not owned by parent companies that test on animals. There we go. They're linked in the description down below along with all of my sources because it's important to cite your sources. If you want to comment, I do appreciate it, of course, as well as liking and subscribing because I come up with new videos every single week. I do recommend that you actually don't comment until you've made it all the way to the end of the video because otherwise you're making a misinformed comment. Who wants that? So as we get started, it's really important for me to identify my biases for you because obviously no one is completely unbiased no matter uh, what news organisations try to tell you. So for me, I'm vegan, I'm pro-GMO, I'm anti-animal testing and I also have a socialist bias but I do recognise that the world that we live in is a capitalistic one and I'm also pro-vaccine. So those are all of my biases going into this so then you're informed of that. That's one reason that I have an issue with many of the documentaries that are out there because they don't actually disclose their biases or where they get their funding from. So I'll let you know right now, I am not a scientist nor am I an expert <laughs> in the field at all. I work for scientists but that doesn't actually mean that me myself has gone through the rigorous amount of like learning and training that they have to go through. So as always anytime that you're listening to a person on the internet uh, tell you information or their opinion take everything that I say with a heap of salt. Of course I have got all of my resources linked in the description but in the world of science sadly there's a lot of misreporting that actually happens in terms of the papers and studies that get shared. So some people don't know how to actually read a scientific paper and of course in order to sell a headline it doesn't really sell much to be able to just say I mean like more work needs to be done in this area but like it looks like there's some evidence for this. You make more money by telling people hey if you eat chocolate and drink wine you'll lose weight. It's it's just the world that we live in. Everything's based on clicks. And honestly I'm also going to link a couple of videos I really do recommend you check out from SciShow. So I'm not going to talk over Hank Green and his team because why would I? But I'll actually just link those up here and also down in the description. Very short, very useful videos. It's also just really important to recognize that I am sharing the information that is available to date. As of April 2021, I am sharing the scientific consensus around this. Nothing's really changed, but I do just want to recognize the fact that things can change. People can be wrong, and it's okay to be wrong. I want people to be okay with admitting when they're wrong. I've been wrong many times in my life, but this is something that <laughs> I don't feel like I'm wrong on because um, I've mentioned before that I used to be anti-GM and now I'm pro it. So everyone has different journeys that they go on depending on the echo chamber that they're in. And I've been told from scientists that I work with that a scientist's mission in life is to prove others wrong. Um, <laughs> and they're also very doubtful of what they put out there as well. Like they won't put something out there unless they're actually really certain of it. So when it comes to me trusting the resources here, I do really trust them as well as because like I've talked with many of the scientists I work for. And so on the fact that papers can be misreported on, um, there is a video that I did all about glitter and biodegradable glitter just up here. If you want to see an example of where one paper was heralded as like gospel and it whipped people up into a frenzy when it wasn't actually a very good study that was done and they actually had to, like the people that conducted the study had to go back and be like, oh actually more work needs to be done in this area, we didn't do this methodology right, you know? So it's like, this is why I'm such a fan of consensus and that's why I'm putting this out there. Okay, now let's talk about the real issues that you want to know about. 
So what is GM or GMO, whichever word you want to call it? Genetically modified organism, GMO, organism whose genome has been engineered in the laboratory in order to favor the expression of desired physiological traits or the generation of desired biological products. It's just that. So it's not frankenfood or whatever fear-mongering words you may have heard. So again, I refer to SciShow's video here if you want to have more information. It's a short 10 minute video, it'll give you a whole bunch of information, especially if you don't want to read all of my sources down below. Like. I understand there's a lot there. So I personally feel like the general public doesn't really have a lot of knowledge about exactly what happens when it comes to genetic modification. Who's going to sell something better? Is it going to be scientists that are strapped for time and working on experiments all the time? Or is it going to be people whose literal job it is in order to sell products, you know? And because not much is known, that is where the potential for fear can really grow and that's like what we've been able to absolutely see come to life here. So because people aren't all that informed, we've been able to see like this is exactly where the fear has come from and like just really taken hold of like a lot of people. And there's all sorts of things like CRISPR-Cas which do provide all sorts of opportunities as well and it's the same as selective breeding has happened for not just decades but like centuries. It's just the fact that GM kind of like speeds up those processes and allows like all sorts of different experimentation to be able to happen in a more selective manner. Um, which happens faster as well. That may not be the most accurate description, but I'm just trying to put it in kind of like layman terms in a way that even I would understand. <laughs> so people have concerns and it's valid to have concerns about something that you aren't informed of. So let's just have a bit of a chat about them. So there's a whole herbicide, pesticide, like sort of concern that happens. And I've seen a lot, and I do mean a lot of worry about this. And of course, like the environmental impact that goes along with that. So Roundup does get a bit of a bad rep. Now, <laughs> I'm not saying that Monsanto, the company, is a good one or a wholly bad one. If you've seen any of my other videos, you'll know that I don't believe that anyone is like entirely good or entirely bad. Like everybody has nuance and it's important to recognize that. The thing is that Roundup is actually one of the safest herbicides that we use. And if you're interested as well, um, in terms of like a direct comparison with like organic farming instead, the natural way to deal with like weeds etc is by tilling the soil. Now <laughs> this actually causes all sorts of environmental damage. So this leads to erosion, runoff into the waterways, loss of carbon into the atmosphere and the disruption of soil communities like the essential worms, microbes and insects which are needed for soil health. Soil is a much more like essential thing than what people realize and a much more delicate thing than what people realize as well. Like soil health is critically important for the continuation of humanity as we know it. So it's really, really important that we do protect soil and make sure that soil doesn't just run off into waterways. Like we don't want that. <laughs> so herbicides wouldn't be able to be used if they weren't actually safe. I'll actually just turn you onto the World Health Organization's website for this because I was like, okay, I wanna just see like what a governing body believes of this that like wants to take care of world health. So in the past, like there were formulations which use things like DDT and those have been banned by countries which have actually signed like, I think it's like the 2001 at Stockholm Convention. So those can't be used anymore. The other ones are actually safe to use. Now, of course you need to have people for it because you're still dealing with like things that are meant to kill things but it's like so with GM you can actually spray less in terms of like the herbicide that you're using because you are breeding pest resistance into your plants hopefully and so that means that less is actually sprayed onto the environment and then less work is needed for the farmer and then they're able to actually save more money which is actually a really really good thing <laughs> but like what effect do herbicides have on the environment don't they also cause like runoff into the environment and like what about like the non-target birds and like non-target plants the issues around those honestly this should be an entire video unto itself but again like i said i'm leaving you with the who's verdict on it the thing is that the way that we farm right now with swaths of monocrops in order to feed people around the world avoiding pesticides in order to feed all of the people that we have isn't exactly gonna be a practical solution or at all possible. So if you did actually want to go through the organic route, let's just hypothesize this. So, so not only do you need more space, you need more labor, you get less crop yield, and you have a higher risk of the crops actually falling prey to disease. And of course these crops are actually not resistant to the climate change which is fast approaching, which we'll be talking about shortly. If you're actually really interested in the future of crops, um, like this is what I'm personally really excited for, is indoor growing. So have a look at like what's been happening globally around that because it fascinates me. But are GM crops safe to consume or to use on your body? Let's have a look. 
There is actually no scientific evidence to show that GM crops are unsafe for human consumption or application. One thing which people may not realise is the fact that GM crops are actually subject to incredibly close scrutiny. Now, sadly this still does mean that animal testing occurs and like I said before, I'm against animal testing but I do also recognise the fact that sadly that is still the preferred method for proving that something is safe by scientists which is something which um, will hopefully change soon because of people like anti-vivisection society's work and uh, I don't know, maybe people realising that you don't have to test on animals in order to prove the safety of something. Anyway, side note. <laughs> so non-GM crops aren't tested in any way to make sure that they're safe for people. Now I also really want to stress the fact that crossbreeding has happened for centuries now. <laughs> like, I wouldn't have the cat that I own or the other cat that I own, you wouldn't have dogs, you wouldn't have corn like the way it is, you wouldn't have all sorts if humans hadn't like gone their sticky jam hands and meddled with everything. It's just what we like to do. We just like to screw everything up apparently. Basically when it comes down to the crossbreeding that happens in order for like natural breeding to occur which makes people happy even though like I said it's not tested <laughs> to make sure it's like fine. Like you've got about the same likelihood of creating an unforeseen event from this kind of breeding as with GM breeding. But like with the GM stuff, it's like you're kind of targeting things in a bit of a different way. You can target things on a absolutely microscopic level. So does this mean that we should be scared of both? Now, no, obviously it doesn't. <laughs> it's just like I said, humans, we love to meddle. If this is so safe, then why have countries banned it? None of this is actually based on sound scientific evidence that's peer reviewed. I'm going to put it out there. This is just another reason why I hate Greenpeace. <laughs> um... They're a separate video in themselves, but I actually don't want to make a video on them because it would make me make my blood boil to a point where I would probably keel over. So like in Europe, for example, France is a particular example of this because they are very staunch in their beliefs. It comes down to politics. And what does politics come down to? Popularity and effective lobbying. <laughs> So they voted on whether or not they wanted to be able to like grow GM crops and sell GM crops within those countries. When it comes down to it, who's actually going to have a better marketing campaign? The scientists are actually still busy at work trying to prove something that is actually safe by giving you provided like sound evidence, or the people that are fantastic at marketing. Who have we been taught to believe for so many years? I blame a lot of this on basically it comes down to like the way that anti-vax happened and the way that climate like possibility deniers um, kind of like sprang up in the early 90s. It made people doubt scientists an awful lot. So I kind of put it down to all of that. Um, anyway, that's a separate topic. Certain GMO crops are still allowed to be sold in Europe, but that basically just means that research and development is actually stilted there. So like I said, nothing is based on scientific evidence. It's based on popularity contests. So you know like in Beauty and the Beast, how they have the mob song? It's like, we don't know what it is, so we're going to kill it. That's kind of the same sort of thing. It's like people actually don't understand the possibilities of this and the actual safety of GM. And they're just like, oh, but I don't really understand how it works. So I'm scared of it, so I'm gonna tell it no at like paying three times the price on buying something that's organic is actually better for everyone. Talk about an accessibility issue there, shall we? But this actually really does remind me of the cannabis reform that happened here in New Zealand. But companies will take advantage! Companies create like these silos where people aren't able to grow their own crops. Um, okay, so my friend, you are mad at capitalism. You are not mad at scientists. I hope that people actually realise as well that most cultivars that you buy in the stores are actually bred by people that have got patents on them. And so by them having patents on them, that means that money is still happening between like all of the different layers. So generic brand, who? <laughs> um, I just hope that people realise that because it's like capitalism, the wheel is still turning with or without GM. So the crops that you're buying in the stores, which are patented, are still bred through natural methods, it just still means that companies are making money from them still, including hopefully those scientists that bred them. <laughs> and don't be mad at this because like I said, we live in a capitalistic society. Nothing happens for free. <laughs> and the thing is that scientists, they need this funding in order to actually create more nutrient dense crops to do all of the stuff which we're going to talk about in just a moment. It's just like I've stated before, I don't really see capitalism as fading away. I don't really see it as crumbling because there is too much incentive to keep it the way it is. Like when we've had generation after generation be brought up in a capitalistic world where our societies are built on it actually functioning and continuing, why would it stop? 
the environment, for the safety of people in order to survive? God no! Profits! So if you're someone that is actually really really mad at that whole system, I hope that you're equally mad at the people that are peddling organic products by fear-mongering people into buying them and spending more than what they realistically can in order to eat items or put items on their skin that are not toxic. Anything is actually toxic at a certain quantity, I'm putting it out there now. You know how much I hate multi-level marketing companies or <laughs> MLMs and those MLM babes? Um, they actually really do profit off this area as well. So that's why I'm saying, like, you'll never be an ethical consumer. But if you are trying to say that organic is still the better choice, think about the people that are selling the organic products. Most of it is actually not through philanthropy. <laughs> They're there to make a business, and business is to make profits. That's how it works. And the way that organic has been marketed for such a long time is the fact that it's made with more care, love, and your safety in mind that people are prepared to pay a premium, more of a premium than what most people can actually afford. Then you're actually just making that wealth disparity get wider because then you're like, oh well I can't eat the toxic ingredients but it's okay for the poor people to. You know what I mean? None of it's toxic anyway. Don't worry about it. Please. If you only take one thing away from this video, know that GM crops and the crops that you're eating in the supermarkets are not toxic. You are fine to eat them. Basically the whole system is screwed up. Pit your anger against the whole system as opposed to the scientists that are actually just trying to do good things. Now let's talk about the reasons why we need GMO. Golden rice. If you haven't heard of this, brief overview. <laughs> In short, this invention could have actually prevented blindness. <laughs> So golden rice was actually created in order to serve the dire need of people living in Asian countries that were dying from deficiency from vitamin A. So what they did with golden rice is they added vitamin A to the most staple food in these countries in order to like make sure that even though people weren't able to eat much food, the food that they were able to eat because it was like something that people could easily get meant that it would prevent the blindness that was actually happening. Um, so what happened? It was banned many 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 people died including mostly children so so golden rice is an example which gets brought up all of the time because it is a concrete example of something which could have genuinely saved lives there are many many other things which GM is actually achieving and trying to achieve um, again SciShow has a really good video on this the scientists that are working on this are not actually in it to try and kill people they're working with food <laughs> that's their prime objective is to make food that can actually help people. They're not creating weapons of mass destruction, they're not trying to do any of that stuff. It's actually a lot more like kind-hearted than what it gets painted as. <sighs> One of the key reasons, which is very dear to my heart, to deal with the impending climate crisis. If you are one of the people that doesn't agree with 97% of uh, scientists that are actually in agreement, <laughs> which is hard to do with scientists, that climate change is a real thing, I don't know what else to tell you other than to please listen to other sources and get out of the echo chamber that you're in. So there is a common misconception that the world is just going to get hotter and that is absolutely not true. So many different effects, um, we're already seeing some of them today. I'm sorry if what I'm about to tell you gives you nightmares, um, but the reality is that depending on where you are in the world, different things are going to be happening. Some areas you'll get more droughts, some areas you will get more rain, some areas will get hotter, some areas will get colder. Bigger, scarier storms are going to become more common and regular. Acidification is going to happen, which will obviously lead to many challenging situations when it comes to the crops and um, animals that people still live off. Rising sea levels will flood low-laying areas. Um, they're constantly having to reevaluate how bad the damage is going to be. My husband's a civil engineer, and what happens is the degree at which people have to prepare cities for is rising all the time in terms of climate, cri in, in terms of the climate change that's going to be hitting us hard. And of course, like the bleaching of the coral reefs is having already a massive impact, and it's actually just going to get worse. Um, and on top of all of this, because all of this stuff is happening, so you're going to get changes in where insects go, you're going to get changes in where animals go, you're going to get changes in where disease spreads where it hasn't spread before. You're going to get basically a lot of really negative things happening in areas where you wouldn't expect it to, and yet if it sounds like a hellscape, it 100% is going to be, unless drastic change actually happens. <laughs> because the thing is that we've never dealt with the change which is coming our way 
and humanity as we know it will not be able to function in the way it currently does. So whilst there is work happening with conventional breeding of crops in order to make them more resistant to different climate change effects and stuff, and there's things like CRISPR, like I mentioned before, why would we want to limit the scientists to using slower methods when we could actually empower them to do more experiments which will happen faster using GM instead? Like, what is the point of wasting precious time which we don't really have? Now honestly I think that a lot of people, myself included, a few years ago before I started working where I do now, we just don't realise how long it takes for conventional breeding to actually happen in terms of like being able to see the results of it. Like to get from the point where you've planted a seed or like whatever, like g germination happens, um, to the point where a, say for example apple tree actually provides fruit, can be like four years. Um, so it can genuinely take, in some cases, five years for us to be able to see the effects of conventional breeding. Of course, work is happening in this area to make it happen faster, um, which will actually mean better crop yields for people, mean like all the positive effects that come along with that, of course. Um, but what I'm saying is, like, we have a finite amount of time to fix the colossal screw up which we have made <laughs> generation upon generation and it's like why would we limit ourselves to only do slower method things or things which may not result in ways that we wanted to why would we not throw a great hat in the ring in order to be able to like make drastic change here to save humanity we're starting to already see the effects of climate change hit us and there are ambitious goals of becoming like carbon neutral by 2050 and all that other good stuff. And it's like, the thing is that, like I mentioned before, society has functioned in this way for generations. And society functions and thrives off capitalism. So why would change happen in an actual, like, meaningful way to make an actual difference? when the status quo is benefiting the people that it currently is. Why would they want to make change when they'll be dead when, uh, you know, like, the disasters really are striking? Like, that's why I'm just putting it out there. Like, we need to assess the motives that are happening here. And this is, of course, where government needs to step in. This is my plea for you to please become involved politically. It makes a huge, huge difference for you to be able to have your say. Not just in the big elections, but the little ones too. Because personally, I'm very doubtful that we'll be able to hit the goals that governments keep on setting up because it's a popularity contest with governments. <laughs> it totally is. Like, that's how they get elected. I'm not really all that confident in us being able to, like, hit these um, wonderful, you know, carbon neutral goals because there's a lot of loopholes in place. And of course, like, government functions on a popularity contest. Like, people have to get voted in. Who wants to vote in the people that are like, oh, I'm taking away all of, like, these good things that you're used to having, and I'm also going to be taxing more in these areas. People need to do these XYZ changes. Companies need to do this, these XYZ changes. Who's going to vote for them? You know, it's like... <laughs> You don't win a popularity contest by making the changes that need to happen. But for me personally, I don't want to see anybody starve because some ignorant people just decided that their arrogance was worth more than like questioning if they may be wrong about something. Echo chambers don't work, in other words. Getting out of your echo chamber will actually do a lot more for you and for society than what you realise. I know that the algorithms like make it that way that we want to keep on hearing like self-affirming things and be like cognitive bias is a huge thing, all sorts of those psychological things. But it's like making sure that you get all sides. That's why I've tried to provide a very holistic approach to this video. It's really, really important to feed 10 billion people. Now, link down below is a website um, which combines a whole different bunch of studies on like the changing population over like the next hundred plus years and like assessing the accuracy of like all of these other ones that have been done and all sorts. By 2100, we're actually estimated to have 10 billion people approximately on the planet. So growing our food in a never changing climate will be challenging, as will of course the storage of that food and distribution of that food, in order to like obviously get it to the right people. We need to encourage the use of GMO in order to <laughs> ensure that people don't die. I know this is grim, this is a reality we are sadly facing. Are there issues with current distribution and food waste? Like, yes. Absolutely, it totally is. The reality is, even though that some people say that we have enough food on the planet to be able to feed everyone, you actually need that food to be long-lasting enough to be able to, and have the correct distribution channels in order to be able to like feed the people it needs to get, 
like get to and of course refrigeration is another huge issue as well not just in terms of like the impact on the environment but in terms of like you need to rely on refrigeration to get something from place a to place b which is in a very remote location so gmo crops can actually be worked on in order to make sure that they ripen slower which means that you have a longer period of time that you're able to actually get it from point A to point B way over there. They could be made drought and pest resistant and of course work can be done to make sure that they don't need to be chilled like so then you actually do have long lasting food. Chilling aspect would not only have a great benefit for the environment but it would also have a great benefit for humanity. And the last one is to make our food more nutrient dense. So having nutrient dense foods means that we can actually have crops which are easier to grow in harder locations which actually provide so much more than what they would have otherwise. So even if people aren't able to have like a really wide variety of food, at least in the smaller variety of food that they're able to easily grow in these locations dealing with the climate crisis and all this other stuff, means that they won't be missing out. Just like with the golden rice example that we talked about, the thing is, things aren't going to really get better. <laughs> That's not what any of the predictions are saying. So it's like, why would we want to limit ourselves based on like unwarranted fear? And of course, like guess what can make food more nutrient dense? So there's GMO, CRISPR, and of course conventional breeding. Using all of the cards in our stack will only help us. So my conclusion of all of this, in my opinion, if we're gonna be able to actually survive this mess that faces us, we need to use everything in our power to do so. To me, it would be completely unethical to not utilize everything that we have. GM is safe, it is highly regulated, and does it have pros and cons? Yes, everything has pros and cons, like that is just life. No one thing is entirely good, like, I can't think of one thing <laughs> that is 100% good. <laughs> like I said before, you'll never be an ethical shopper. If you just break it down to a cost of benefit analysis, it would be a rudimentary one, but it would make sense. If you care about humanity, it makes sense. Now, I'm not telling you to boycott companies that sell organic products. That is not my intention here at all. Like, if you like the products, it's all good. I just want you to, like, question why you are believing this way that GMOs are unsafe and that organic is better because it's actually been proven that it's not. Really my entire intention of this is to share with you why you shouldn't believe the rampant misinformation that is being sold to people in order to make them spend more money. I don't want you to be led down a path of thinking that closes you off to possibilities and makes you just really untrusting of everyone. Of course, much less it doesn't help the future of the planet. So those are my final thoughts, that's my whole video. If you made it all the way to the end, please leave the globe emoji since this is a global issue. I really, really do appreciate it and I know that this is like a very touchy subject. So I'll be reading all of the comments down below, don't worry. If you disagree with me on any points, especially if you are actually qualified, I'd be really, really keen to hear your thoughts on this. Um, I know that it divides a lot of people, even though it shouldn't, it's kind of been made into like a personality thing and why is that defining your personality if you believe in science or not? That's, that feels a bit weird to me. Anyway, thank you lovely so much for watching and I'll see you next week with another video. I'm doing the Colourpop one next time, something a little bit lighter <laughs> because this one has made me incredibly angry. I think I'm going to go have a cinnamon roll and watch Chicago now and maybe do some mending of clothes because that's a way to actually save the environment. Um, anyway, thank you again lovelies. Bye! Let's jump into it. Of course, if you haven't been here before, we... <laughs> if you haven't been... Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> if you haven't... Blah, oh my god. If you haven't been here before, on Tuesdays... Um, if you haven't... Oh my god, I can't talk. My throat hurts. So there's the whole herbicide pesticide. <laughs> pesticide. 